Now that we've got a nice foundational understanding of the different trig functions and how they work together, we're ready to take a look at what are called trigonometric identities. And these are used to help us simplify trig expressions. And that's going to be our question. How do we simplify trig expressions? And the way we simplify these trig expressions is we use various identities. And we've already seen several of these identities before. For example, we know that the tangent of theta is equal to the sine divided by the cosine. We also know that the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent of theta, which would also mean then tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. And in fact, we could even rewrite the reciprocal of tangent as cosine over sine. We know the secant of theta is equal to the reciprocal of cosine. Or we could also write that as cosine is the reciprocal of secant. And finally, we have that the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine. Or we could write that the sine is the reciprocal of the cosecant. We've already seen these before. We know these. There's another set of identities, though, that we're going to use a lot. And these are called the Pythagorean identities. And we've actually already seen the first one. We've used this one quite a bit in our prior videos, that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. There's two more Pythagorean identities that we'll use quite often. And they come from this formula, this sine squared plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. If we were to divide by sine squared all the way across, That's going to give us a new Pythagorean identity. Because sine squared divided by sine squared is 1, plus cosine divided by sine is cotangent, and it's squared, equals the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Which means we could also solve for the cotangent squared by subtracting 1. So sometimes you'll see it written that way as well. But ultimately, this gives us a new Pythagorean identity that connects the cotangent and the cosecant. The third one is very similar. We start with sine squared plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. But this time, we're going to divide by cosine squared of theta. And when we do that, we end up with our third Pythagorean identity. Sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared plus cosine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And the reciprocal of cosine squared is secant squared. And again, sometimes it's convenient to solve this equation for the tangent squared. So you might sometimes see that tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. And I guess by the same token of solving, going back to example a, example a, we could solve for sine squared by subtracting cosine squared from both sides. And we can also solve for the cosine squared as 1 minus the sine squared. 
But usually what we say is you should at least have memorized the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And I prefer to derive the other ones by just dividing by sine squared or dividing by cosine squared. It's less to memorize. But some people do find it advantageous to memorize that 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared, and tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. Those are all going to be important identities. So how do we use all of these reciprocal and Pythagorean identities? Well, we're going to use them to simplify some expressions. For example, if we've got the cosine of theta times the cosecant of theta, this can actually be simplified as one trig function because we know another way to rewrite the cosecant. Cosecant is 1 over the sine of theta. We still have cosine in front of it. Technically, that's over 1. So when we multiply across, we end up with cosine over sine, which we should recognize as the cotangent of theta. So cosine times cosecant is exactly the same as the cotangent. Here's another one. Let's take the cotangent of theta and divide it by the cosecant of theta. Kind of the general rule for simplifying is to change everything to sines and cosines, unless there's some obvious relationship that we see beyond that. So cotangent in the numerator is cosine divided by sine. Cosecant in the denominator is the reciprocal of sine. And since we have fractions inside of fractions, we can multiply top and bottom by that common denominator of sine theta. And it reduces out, leaving just a cosine of theta. So cotangent divided by cosecant seems to simplify to just cosine. How about this one? Secant squared theta minus 1 over sine squared theta. Well, we should recognize secant squared minus 1. Whenever we see something squared and 1 working together, either positive or negative, I'm thinking about one of these Pythagorean identities. And you notice letter C written in red is secant squared minus 1. Secant squared minus 1 is exactly the same as tangent squared. So I'm going to do that fix first. Tangent squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta. Well, if I rewrite this, tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared of theta all over sine squared. We could put that over 1. Again, I'm going to rationalize by multiplying by a cosine squared of theta on top and bottom. And when I do, I get sine squared theta left on top and sine squared theta cosine squared theta in the denominator, which allows the sine squareds to divide out, leaving behind 1 over cosine squared theta. And cosine is the reciprocal of secant, still squared and now completely simplified. Secant squared is the same as secant squared minus 1, all divided by the sine squared. Let's do one more simplifying problem. Let's try 1 plus cotangent of theta over 1 plus the tangent of theta. Now, the 1 plus might make us think we want to use Pythagorean identities, but not right now, actually, because we don't have cotangent or tangent squared. The Pythagorean identities all use squareds. 
So when all else fails, I change things to sines and cosines. So we have 1 plus cotangent is cosine theta divided by the sine of theta all over 1 plus tangent is the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And again, to get rid of the little fractions, we're going to multiply top and bottom by the sine theta cosine theta, the common denominator of sine theta cosine theta. And when I distribute that sine theta cosine theta through, we have to also multiply the 1 by sine theta cosine theta and sine theta cosine theta, which allows the sines to divide out in the numerator. So we have sine theta cosine theta plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared theta divided by, in the denominator, the cosines divide out, leaving behind sine theta cosine theta plus sine squared theta. If we want to reduce the fraction, one thing we cannot do, don't do this, this is bad, we can't just cross off sine theta cosine theta because they're separated by addition and subtraction. Before we can reduce, we have to factor. On the top, we can factor out a cosine theta, leaves behind a sine theta plus cosine theta. And in the denominator, we can factor out a sine theta, which leaves behind a cosine theta plus sine theta. And what's nice about that is the binomial in parentheses there is a common factor. Because they're multiplied, we are allowed to reduce those out. Now, they are backwards, but sine plus cosine is the same as cosine plus sine. So we can still reduce those out. And so we're just left with the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta, which we should recognize as the single trig function cotangent of theta. So 1 plus cotangent divided by 1 plus tangent is exactly the same thing as just simply taking the cotangent. Usually with trig, we're not actually working with an expression that we want to simplify, though. Quite often, we have some claim that two expressions are equal to each other, and we want to verify or prove that the two expressions are actually equal. The idea with the proof is you're going to have something on the left claiming to be equal to something on the right. And what we need to do is work on one side and simplify to get the other side. And what's important to note is we must work on one side. I often see students try and do proofs by multiplying both sides of the equation by something or adding something to both sides of the equation. That only works if we know both sides are equal. We're trying to prove they're equal. So we can't assume they're equal to prove they're equal. That won't work. So we're going to pick one side and massage it, play with it, change it to make it look like the other side. For example, it's been claimed that 1 plus cotangent of theta divided by the cosecant of theta is the same as sine theta plus cosine theta. To prove that, we're going to pick on one side and make it look like the other side. It's usually easier to pick on the side that looks more complicated. It's easier to simplify than make things complicated. And as I look at this, I think this left side looks more complicated. So that's where I'm going to focus my energy. And one thing I know I can do with this is I can change it to sines and cosines. If I don't know what to do, I'm going to go with sines and cosines. So 1 plus cotangent is cosine theta divided by sine theta divided by cosecant is 1 over sine theta. Again, we can't use the Pythagorean identity because we don't have anything squared. 
But what we can do here is get rid of the little fractions by multiplying by the common denominator of sine theta on top and bottom. Of course, that has to distribute onto the 1 as well. And when the sine reduces out, we're left with sine theta plus cosine theta over. And when the sine reduces out, we get 1. And dividing by 1 doesn't change it, so we're just left with sine theta plus cosine theta, which you notice matches what we were trying to get. So now we've proved this identity is true. We started with one side. We can do left or right, and then massage that one side so that it looks just like the other side. Let's do another one so we can get some practice with it. How about cosine squared of theta divided by 1 plus sine of theta equals 1 minus the sine of theta. Well, everything's already in sines and cosines. I do think the left side is, again, more complicated here. And one thing I notice is that cosine squared kind of looks like a Pythagorean identity. If you remember from our Pythagorean identities, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. And if we want to reduce, we have to factor the fraction first. We can't just cross off ones and sines. That's bad. So factoring on top, you should notice that's a difference of squares. That's 1 plus the sine of theta times 1 minus the sine of theta, all over the denominator of 1 plus the sine of theta. And now that it's factored, we are allowed to reduce out a factor, leaving behind 1 minus the sine of theta which matches the right side, we've now proved this identity is true. Quite often, when we get to the end of an identity, you'll see uh, one of several options. Sometimes you'll see people put a little box and color it in, meaning the proof is done. Sometimes you'll see people put the letters QED, which is an acronym for a Latin term that basically means uh, that which was to be demonstrated. I've also seen people put w to the fifth power, though I think that's less official. That stands for the first letter of which was what we wanted. But that kind of officially wraps up a proof. I'm not going to make a big deal about it in this course. But if you want to wrap up your proofs and make them look nice and official, you can end with one of those expressions. All right, so we've got a couple trig identities that we've started taking a look at today. The Pythagorean identities are really the new ones, but we also have the reciprocal identities that we've already got experience with. Take a look at trying and practicing some of those on the homework assignment. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck to you.